Okay. Uh, so what if we want to calculate an interface temperature? And this is very important, right? Especially in design, because we want to know interface temperature to select the materials for heat exchangers, reactors, whatever equipment where temperature becomes pretty important. We want to know those interface temperatures. This is for design purposes. And once you select a material, well, a cost is implied. So cost analysis and selection of materials uh, is very important to know, especially the interface temperatures. So what if we want to calculate TS3? TS3 is the temperature heat at the second wall, right? first wall, second wall. So we want to know this TS3, three surface three. Um, well, in this case, delta T is going to be the difference between surroundings one and TS3, the one that we want to calculate, right? And now we have to count again how many resistances we have between those two temperatures. So how many we have? One convective, right? Because we have a fluid solid interface one conductive because of the first layer, a second conductive because of the second layer, right? So it will be a total of three resistances, two conductive and one convective. Two conductive because we have two layers only to analyze at this point, right? And one convective because we have an interface fluid solid, right? So we already have the values from the previous slide, and if you did the calculation, we already calculate this convective because we are dealing with the same layer, right? With the same wall. So now the R total is going to be 7.3. If we just count three resistances, and um, we can just take out TS3 out of, out of our heat transfer equation, right? So TS3 is going to be T surroundings one, minus heat transfer rate multiplied by R total. Considering heat transfer rate is constant because we are under steady state conduction, right? So then that gives us a value of 493.4 kelvins for TS3. Now calculate for me TS2, please. How many resistances for TS2? Two resistances, right? One convective and one conductive, because those are the resistances between the temperature involved or our gradient, our driving force. Two resistances, right, between those two temperatures, total resistance 5.3. Uh, Kelvin watts and heat transfer rate, um, it remains constant because we are under a steady state assumption. Uh, then TS2, or the temperature at surface 2, is going to be more or less 577.4 Kelvin. No. Uh, let's solve another problem to reinforce this uh, concept. So a refrigerator wall. Uh, we have a wall of a refrigerator that is constructed of fiber insulation with a K value or thermal conductivity of 0 0.035 watt meter Celsius. And this insulation of fiberglass is sandwiched between two layers of one millimeter thick sheet metal. Obviously the metal is going to be a higher K than the insulation, right? Because it's a conductor. The K value or thermal conductivity for the sheet metal is 15.1 watt meter Celsius. Um, the refrigerated space is maintained at three Celsius, like you can see in this image, right? Here is the refrigerated space at three Celsius. And the average heat transfer coefficients at the inner and outer surfaces of the wall are four watt meter square Celsius and nine watt meter square Celsius for the H values. The kitchen average 25 Celsius, the air of the kitchen average 25 Celsius. It is observed that condensation occurs on the outer surfaces of the refrigerator when the temperature of the outer surface drops to 20 Celsius. Determine the minimum thickness of fiberglass insulation that needs to be used in the wall in order to avoid condensation on the outer surfaces. So we want to know how thick 
or how much is this L? How thick is the fiberglass to avoid condensation in the outer surface of the fridge? First of all, you need to realize that we are dealing with a composite layer. Metal, fiberglass, metal, right? Then for sure, this is a problem that should be solved with electrical analogy. When we deal with layers, we use electrical analogy, right? Next question, how many resistances we are talking about in this layer? So first of, all, first of all, we realize we need to use electrical analogy. For electrical analogy, we need R total. For R total, we need to count our resistances. How many resistances we have in this composite layer? We have five, two convectives and three conductives, right? From the kitchen air or kitchen surrounding, right? To the wall of the fridge is one convective because we have a fluid solid interface. Then we have our first conductive because we have our first sheet of metal, it's a solid. Then our second conductive because we have another layer, the fiberglass, the insulation layer. Then we have a third conductive because of the second metal sheet, right? And then we have a second conductive because we have an interface between the refrigerated space, right? The fluid and the solid, the metal sheet, five. As always, I will mark this for now, but I'm sure you already have it in mind uh, as per our previous discussion. I'm going to assume a steady state. Right, and under steady state conditions, the rate of heat transfer through the refrigerator wall is constant. Then I can define that the heat transfer rate between the room and the refrigerated space equals the heat transfer rate between the room and the outer surface of the refrigerator. Now I'm going to consider a unit surface area. I'm going to do my calculations per meter square. So let's calculate first the heat transfer between the room and the outer surface of the refrigerator. What I'm going to use to calculate that heat transfer rate. What kind of phenomena is that? Conduction, convection, or radiation? It's convection because the heat transfer is between the room and the outer surface of the refrigerator. Okay, I have an interface fluid solid. Then I use Newton's cooling law to get the heat transfer rate by convection. Heat transfer rate by convection is choosing Newton's cooling law. I have the H value, the convective heat transfer coefficient was given. Times per meter square. I said that I'm going to make calculations per meter square. And delta T, 25 minus 20, right? 25 minus 20. That gives me 45 watts of heat transfer rate, right? I have the heat transfer rate. I can consider now heat transfer rate constant through the entire world, put in the lexical analogy and get the missing thickness. And strategy is as follows. You focus on a piece of the entire wall, right, to get the heat transfer rate. You have it, you assume it constant, and you get any missing information. If it is an interface temperature, or if it is a thickness, or if, I mean, it can be any other of the variables, right? It can be even a K value or a H value, you already have the heat transfer rate through the entire wall from analyzing a piece of the problem. Okay, that's a very common strategy when dealing with the electrical analogy. So step two, use the thermal resistance network to calculate the heat transfer rate between the room and the refrigerated space. So 
I have Q, I already calculated. I know the difference of temperature. I know I have five resistances. We already count them. And I don't know this L. This L is what I don't know for the insulation, the thickness of the fiberglass is what I don't know. So if I put or I write my thermal analogy, right, delta T over R total, and I write my, uh, my, five, uh, my five resistances, here you can see only four, right, because I'm putting the two metals here together because they have the same thickness, they have the same value, it's exactly the same thing, right? It's made out of the same metal. How I can know that? Because the K value is the same, right? And the thickness is one millimeter. So I collapse them, the two of them here. So we put numbers to this equation and we just get the L for the insulation or the thickness of the insulation. And that's it. We have K, we have the two temperatures, we have the H values, we have the K, we have the thickness of the metal. Everything is there just to put numbers and get the thickness of the insulation. So please solve. So if you put numbers to the previous equation, then you have the constant heat transfer rate, right? That was 45 watts. And we are doing per meter square calculation equals delta T over right the resistances where we don't know what is the l or the thickness of the fiberglass so if we get the l or the thickness of the fiberglass out of this equation we have a thickness of 0 0.0045 meters or 0.45 centimeters move to different geometries so we analyze uh, walls but in engineering we also deal a lot with some other common geometries such as spheres and cylinders, right? Our pipes are cylinder, heat exchangers are essentially cylinders. Our reactors, the TFRs, the uh, PBRs are um, cylinders. So we need to analyze this very important geometry. What if we have layers of cylinders, right? And we are now to consider a hollow cylinder, a pipe, okay? Just look at like a pipe. And um, we will have now to define the radius, right? That is a characteristic length of this geometry. We will have an inner radius and an outer radius, certain thickness in that pipe, right? And we typically also add layers of insulation to those pipes. So that means that we need to modify our electrical analogy for a cylinder. So we are just going to modify the geometry essentially, right? The, um, the, geometrical, um, the geometrical part of the analogy. So um, first of all, since we are dealing with 1D steady conduction, we are going to assume that the length of our cylinder of our pipe is much, 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 much bigger than the diameter. Then the heat flows only in radial direction. So radial direction is going to be very important for us. We are making the problem 1D by considering the length much, 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 much bigger than the diameter. Okay, 1D conduction, right? So we just make a cylinder 1D with this assumption. Then we need to modify our Fourier law in terms of the radial direction because now the radial direction is going to be important, right? And we have heat transfer rate by conduction equals K area at, at the specified radial position, dt over dr. So then the area for heat flow in the cylindrical system is going to be given by 2PRL. Uh, if we substitute this area into Fourier law, we have something like this. If we apply our common boundary conditions, separate variables and integrate, that is something we commonly do to get these equations, we get something like this. So let's put those, um, um, those boundary conditions in there and the limits. And after integration, we have something like this. 2 pi KL delta T over natural log of R naught over RI. 
Then the thermal resistance or conductive resistance for this cylindrical layer is going to be natural log of R naught over R1, Ri, sorry, divided by 2 pi KL. We are just putting the geometry in the lexical analogy. It's nothing more line than that. It's nothing more complex. We are moving from a wall to a cylinder. So we are putting everything in terms of the geometry. Okay. So not complication here. So I can summarize then that the heat transfer rate is going to be delta T right over R total. If we have one cylindrical layer, how many resistances we are going to have in that pipe or cylindrical layer? We will have three, right? One convective inside, right? Because we will be passing water or any fluid inside the pipe, right? The first conductive because of the thickness of the pipe itself, right? And a second convective because our pipe is going to be surrounded by air or any fluid, right? So we will have total of three resistances, two convective and one conductive. Again, this is by a, for only one layer, for a bare pipe. If we add insulation, we keep adding as many layers as you want to add, right? So then here we have the formulas for those resistances. And very important for the convective, just recall all of this is going to be the area. So if you see later formulas, area one and H1 is because I collapsed the two pi RL. So these are the very important equations we need to have in mind. This is the same delta T over R total, right? It's heat transfer rate by conduction in a uh, composite wall, either cylindrical or uh, either in Cartesian coordinates, right? So let's solve our first pipe so you can see how this works. So essentially, I just change everything to cylindrical coordinates instead of Cartesian, and we have this. Um, this equation for heat transfer rate through a cylindrical layer. Um, so let's see how we can evaluate the heat loss through an insulated steam pipe. We have a steam that is flowing through a cast iron pipe and the temperature of that steam, T1 here, is 320 Celsius. And the K, the thermal conductivity of the iron pipe is 80 watt meter Celsius whose inner and outer diameters are 5 and 5.5 respectively. The pipe is covered by 3 centimeter thick glass gull insulation with a K value of 0 0.05 watt meter Celsius. Heat is lost to the surroundings at T2 equals 5 by natural convection and radiation with a combined heat transfer coefficient of 18 watt meter Square Celsius. That means that it, this H value already takes in account radiation too, okay? Uh, both convection and radiation. Taking the heat transfer coefficient inside the pipe to be 60 watt meter square Celsius, determine the rate of heat loss from the steam per unit length of the pipe. So again, we are going to do per unit length calculations. Also determine the temperature drop across the pipe shell and the insulation. First of all, after reading this statement, we realize that we have layers, cylindrical layers. We have an insulated pipe, that means it's a cylindrical layer. That results in us using the electrical analogy. So for calculating the heat transfer uh, rate under steady conductions for this cylindrical layer, we have to use the formula delta T over R total, right? So how many resistances we have? You have them marked there. We have four resistances, right? Two convective, 
too conductive, right? So four resistances, two conductive, two convective. Uh, very important uh, that I need uh, to capture your attention at this point, the problem give us diameters. And if you saw all our equations were written in terms of radius. Also, when you look for nominal sizes of pipes, you will find diameters, right? When you go to tables to look for nominal sizes, you typically, uh, tables in the book give you diameters, inner and outer diameters. So don't forget to change to radius because our equations were developed for radius and that's a very common mistake. You just go to the book, get the nominal sizes of diameters and plug them in the equation. So change to radius. So the radius for this problem, diameter one, five centimeter, radius one, 2.5, for two, 5.5, radius 2.75, the radius of the, of the, or the third radius is going to be R2 plus the insulation, right? Because you need to keep adding. You add the two plus the insulation. So we have radius one, radius two, and radius three. We are going to make per meter length calculation, right? So L is going to be one, so we can calculate the areas that we are going to put in the resistances equation, right? So area one, two pi R1 L. So two pi R1 times one meter length. Area three, two pi R3 L. So we have our area three. We are ready to put these areas into the resistances equations. Uh, this, um, once you gain practice, you will put the whole number there. So it's not a big deal. I'm just doing a step by step in this first problem, okay? Um, so let's get those resistances. So first convective is one over heat transfer coefficient times area one that we calculate in the previous slide. Again, you can plug here the whole thing, pi um, RL. Uh, so one over 60 times the area one, we have our first convective resistance. Then comes the first conductive resistance because we have the pipe, the thickness of the pipe itself. So uh, we get the formula for that. This is the formula to get that conductive resistance for a cylindrical layer. So natural log of R2 over R1 and here is missing uh, the slash, okay? So that's uh, my mistake, typo. Um, over two pi K, the K value is given for the metal, the pipe per meter length. So that give us our first conductive resistance. Second conductive resistance is a resistance due to the presence of the insulation layer. Then we do natural log of R3 over R2, two pi K2, K2 for the insulation. Remember K depends on the material. You use the K of the insulation here. That give us a value of 2.35 Celsius watt for that resistance imposed by the insulation. The second convective resistance, well, we have the H value given and the area three. So we get a value of 0.154 Celsius watt. We can add all these four resistances to get our total resistance of 2.61 Celsius watt. Well, we can calculate the heat transfer rate because we have our total, right? So delta T, delta T divided by our total is going to be 121 watts heat transfer rate through the entire cylindrical wall. That includes right from the steam to the outer air where we have exposed our insulated pipe, right? That was the first question. Then the next question asks, how much is the temperature drop across the pipe and the insulation? How we can get that delta T? 
Well, you will just multiply heat transfer rate by the R value, the resistance involved in that part of the problem is what we did with the wall, remember? If we want to know TS2, we just count that number of resistances from the surroundings to TS2. If we want to know from the surroundings to TS3, we just count those resistances in between where we want to evaluate that delta T, right? So the same thing here. For the delta T of the pipe is going to be heat transfer rate that is going to be constant through our entire cylindrical wall because we are assuming a steady state conduction, right? Times the resistance of the pipe. That gives us a delta T through the pipe of 0 0.02 Celsius. What if we want to know the delta T of the insulation? where it's going to be heat transfer rate times the resistance imposed by the insulation, right? Because it's where we are evaluating. So that delta T is going to be 284 Celsius, right? 